This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. How's Dale Avenue's best-looking doorman this morning? Oh, fine. Thank you, sir. How did you know my name? <laughs> I have a terrific memory, Harry. I've called you by that name almost every day for three years. Every day for three... <laughs> well, I'm sorry, sir, but I don't recall having seen you as long as I've been on this door. <laughs> oh, dear. Do I know you, sir? <laughs> I'm Boston Blackie, and you should know me. You've talked to me often enough. What goes on here? I don't understand this at all, sir. Oh, you must come have on. the wrong doorman. Uh, perhaps the night man. Or perhaps the wrong building. Oh, give it up, will you, Harry? It's not that good a joke. How the children? Sir, this is terribly confusing. I have no children. Will you stop? I don't know what the idea is, but... Oh, well, never mind. Oh, well, never mind. Oh, well, never mind. Oh, well, never mind. Is Miss Wesley waiting for me in the lobby, or is she still up in her apartment? Miss Wesley, sir? You're going to run this right into the ground, aren't you? Yes, I, Miss I, Wesley, Miss Mary Wesley. I'm very sorry, sir, but I... Look, don't... this is 1919 Dale Avenue, isn't it? Yes, sir. Your name is Harry, isn't it? Yes, sir. And in apartment 19G, you have a blonde tenant named Mary Wesley, don't you? I'm very sorry, sir, but I've been on this door for 12 years, and no one named Mary Wesley has ever lived in this building. Now back to Dick Colmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friends. Harry, what's it say on this door? 19G, sir. But no Miss Wesley lives here. Are you kidding? A tenant named Wanda Bennett occupies 19G and has for several years. We'll see about that in just... Yes? Well, who are you and where is Mary Wesley? Mary Wesley? That's right. I'm afraid you have the wrong apartment. Forgive me, sir, but I told you so. All right, Harry. I'll take over from here alone. Very well, sir. Miss Bennett, I'd like to talk to you. Well, of course. Come right in. Thank you. Harry, I'll see you downstairs later. Yes, sir. Miss Bennett, my name is Boston Blackie. You probably never heard of me, Well, but... of course I've heard of you, Blackie. Read about you and seen your pictures in the papers. What's with this room? You're much more handsome than your photographs. This I... place looks different. What's the matter, Blackie? You sound puzzled. I'm beginning to get a little annoyed. This is Mary Wesley's apartment, but it's been completely refurnished since yesterday afternoon. I don't know why you say that, Blackie. This is my apartment. And it's been my apartment for a long time, and I've never heard of anybody named Mary Wesley. Isn't this apartment 19G? It is. Now that you've found that out, how about getting out? Something screwy somewhere. According to this setup, I must be in the wrong building and the wrong apartment. But I can't be. No. No. Even the great Boston Blackie can't be right all the time. Listen, I... I don't know Mary Wesley. I don't know why you think this is her apartment. And from now on, Blackie, let's just say I don't know you. Who is it? The superintendent, Miss Bennett. Oh, uh, just a minute. Ah. Oh. Come in, Mr. Skylander. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Harry just phoned me and said that Boston Blackie was here. Yes, he was. Oh, looking for Miss Wesley, of course. <laughs> Who else? Uh-huh. Well, um, what did he find out? Not a thing. Not a thing. But he certainly must be doing some fancy guessing. <laughs> yes, yes. No question about that. Does uh, he know that Miss Wesley saw Tyler? He must be pretty sure of it. Or why all this? He'll uh, probably question you next, Mr. Skylander. Oh, oh yes, yes, I'm quite sure of that. That's why I came right up the minute the doorman phoned me. I want to know if you told Blackie that Miss Wesley had seen Tyler or given him any hint as to what happened to her. Uh, I let him do most of the talking. Yes, yes, I think that was a good idea. It was the only thing I could do. This Tyler thing is pretty dangerous. Oh, don't I know it, don't I know it. But we've got to go through with this. Yes, I know. And I know one other thing, too. Oh? What's that? Boston Blackie will never figure out what happened. So 
ignore it. This is him. I'm sorry I didn't get here last night, Mr. Tyler, but I was over to Buddy's house and didn't get your message till this morning. Well, that's all right, Bill. I was pretty busy last night myself, anyway. Yeah? Blonde, brunette, or redhead? I saw it. You really kill them, don't you, Mr. Tyler? Well, I'm not being fooled. It's my money they like. But I like them, so it doesn't matter. Now, Bill, our little partnership has satisfied me perfectly. Yeah. Things have gone like clockwork. Yes, like clockwork. But results of your uh, activities are going to be discovered any day now. Before that happens, I want you out of town. Huh? Change your name from Bill Willoughby to, uh, well, let me see, uh, Jim Lawrence. I suggest you leave town today. Okay, but what about my share of the money? I know you paid the cost of everything, but you said we'd split the profits 50-50. We will. But I have a lot of money outstanding. Yeah? Now, when you come back in a month or two, I'll have your money for you. Okay, but look, don't spend all our profits on those dames of yours. You don't mind if I spend my share, do you? That's okay with me. Who gets it, huh? That blonde girl named Mary you were out with last night? What? The one you picked up at the Club 60? How'd you know I was with a blonde named Mary at the Club 60 last night? Your butler told me. He said you came home last night mumbling to yourself about it. Is she the one you're going to start seeing steady? No, Bill. I doubt if I'll ever see that particular blonde again. <laughs> Faraday, I know this is one time that you won't tell me to get out of your office. Well, I ought to, Blanky. Mary Wesley's not missing. This is a gag of some kind. But the whole thing's crazy, Blanky. How can I believe your story? I don't know. I, I can hardly believe it myself. Mm, no wonder. But it's true. Mary's doorman didn't know me. Perry's apartment is 19G, and a girl named Wanda Bennett says that she's lived there for a long time and says she can prove it. Ah, they were both kidding you. Maybe. I'll tell you why I'm worried. The last time I saw Mary was yesterday afternoon, about five, when I sent her out to see if she could contact Henry Tyler. Henry Tyler? Why did you do that? Because I heard he's back in town and about to begin operating. You know what that means. We're due for a new jewelry racket. Tyler always dealt in jewelry. Well, maybe so. But look, why did you send Miss Wesley to find him for you? Because no one knows what he looks like. But he's a sucker for a pretty girl. Always picking them up in night spots and restaurants. So you sent Mary to see if she could accidentally get close enough to Tyler to get picked up, huh? That's right. Tyler likes to play the big shot with women. I was pretty sure he might hint to her that, well, what he was up to. And you let her go. Genius! Cut it out, Faraday. I'm really worried. You think she saw Tyler and he got wise, huh? Yeah. Come on, I'll take you up to Miss Wesley's and show you how to get the truth out of that doorman, that Wanda Bennett, for somebody in that building. <laughs> Now, look, Miss Bennett. Yes? I'm a police officer, and I don't want to listen to any more lies. I've told you the truth a dozen times, Inspector Faraday, and I've called the building superintendent. Maybe he'll convince you I'm not lying. Faraday, you're not having any more luck here than you did with the doorman. This is Miss Wesley's apartment. I remember it. 19G, 1919 Dale Avenue, right? Sure. But I don't understand any of this. The furniture here is different, and, and so are the rugs and drapes, everything in the place. Sergeant Matthews is checking with moving companies now. That's good. What happened here is that Miss Wesley moved out, and Miss Bennett moved in last night. I'm going to prove that. And I'm going to know what's in back of all this nonsense. Come in. Oh, that's probably the building superintendent. Uh, you sent for me, Miss Bennett? Yes, Mr. Skylander. Come in. This is Inspector Faraday of the police, and this is Boston Black. How are you? I'm happy to meet both of you. They uh, want to ask you some questions. Just a few, Mr. Skylander. Oh, very well. How long has Miss Bennett lived in this apartment? A long time. A long time. Huh? That's Can right. you prove that? I think so, Blackie. We'll find out. Suppose we say Miss Wesley doesn't live in this apartment. Where in this building does she live? Miss Wesley? Yes. Oh, we have no Miss Wesley here. Are you sure you have the right name? Well, yeah, that's the only thing he does have right so far, Mr. Skylander. And I'll... Come in! That's nice of you to invite people into my apartment, Inspector Paraday. Uh, hello, Inspector. Come in, Matthews. Did you check with the moving companies yet? Just as you ordered, Inspector. Checked with every moving company in town. Yeah, I'll bet you found out who moved Miss Wesley out of here and where. Sorry, Inspector, but no moving company moved any Miss Wesley out of this apartment or into any other. What were you saying about that, Faraday? Oh, quiet. I still say this is a gag, and I'll prove it if oh, it's the left. Excuse me, Inspector, but we got a tip at headquarters a few minutes ago that Henry Tyler's back in business. Hmm, that does it. Tyler's back in business, and Faraday, Miss Bennett, the superintendent here, they're both lying. Uh, you know that, don't you? Oh, you admit I know something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Blackie, that can't be you talking. I'll answer that when I found Mary. Found Mary? I was going to question the other tenants, but I can wait. 
They'll probably all lie to me, too. I think the quickest way to find Mary is to find Tyler. He's responsible for her disappearance. And when I do find Tyler, he's the one who'll wish he was lost. Mr. Tyler, I can't believe it. You'll sell me those Stanley watches for $20 each. For $20 each, Mr. Johnson. Well, I... And uh, please don't say that they're stolen goods. You'll hurt my feelings. Well, I can't help but think you... You heard what I said. Well, Stanley watches can't be bought for less than $30 in wholesale. And Mr. Johnson, have you by any chance heard of the theft of any Stanley watches? Oh, no, no, I haven't. But then I... I assure you, you're being offered legitimately procured merchandise. And I'll tell you something else. Right. The watches I'm offering you are the last I have. Oh, I see. In other words, if I don't take these, I can't come back and do business with you later. No, you can't. And this is my last offer to what I trust will be my last customer. Will you buy? I'll buy. Fine, fine, Mr. Johnson. Okay. The watches are yours. Good. Now you're in business, and I'm out of it. <laughs> And now, back to Boston Blackie. Mary Wesley goes searching for Henry Tyler at Boston Blackie's suggestion. When Blackie calls on Mary the next day, not only are she and her furniture and personal belongings missing, but someone else is living in her apartment and claims she has been for several years. Meanwhile, Henry Tyler, famed jewelry racketeer, completes his latest operations before either Blackie or the police can find out what he is doing. As we return to our story, a phone call comes to police headquarters. Hello? Officer, this is Miss Snyder. I'm secretary to John Stanley of the Stanley Watch Company, and I, I want to report the disappearance of the chief of our package and shipping department, Bill Willoughby. Now, what makes you think he's disappeared? Well, well, he didn't show up for work this morning, and he isn't home. Your firm hasn't heard from him for 24 hours. You think he's missing, Miss Knight. Uh, uh, that's right. I wouldn't call that oh, a good... Now, let me explain. Shipments of our watches are being returned to us. Shipments of watches that had to go through Willoughby's hands. What's the connection? Well, well, they weren't our watches. They had Stanley cases and dials, but the movements were cheap things that could be bought for about $2. Ah, I get it. Somebody grabbed a lot of Stanley cases, put cheap movements in them, and sold them. Yeah, that's right. And you think that was Willoughby, huh? Mr. Stanley thinks so. Willoughby had access to the cases, and, and now he's missing. Now, that makes sense, doesn't it? Sure. But I have an idea that your missing man is more than missing. I'm afraid... If he fooled around with a racket, he probably had a connection with somebody else. And that somebody else might want to make sure he was missing permanently. Somebody might have used him to steal the watch casings and then stopped his clock. Faraday, I know I've cluttered up your office with crazy notions, but I'm still convinced that if we can find... If we can get to Henry Tyler, we'll find Mary. Maybe. Only I've tried to locate the guy, and I can't. We haven't heard a word about Tyler since Matthews gave us that tip. Ah, uh, Black, you had no right to send Miss Wesley out to look for him. You ought to know Tyler's too smart to spill anything to anyone. Even a pretty girl. Tyler likes to brag about himself to women. I know that much about him. Well, you obviously have nothing to brag about. Well, right? maybe he bragged plenty and then discovered who she was. It's a fine time to think of that. You know... Anyway. Homicide, Faraday. Uh, hello, Inspector. This is Matthews. Yeah? You haven't picked up a body today that we can't identify, have you? Not that I know of. Why? Well, the gal's secretary to John Stanley at the Stanley Watch Company says the chief of their packing and shipping department's missing. Missing, huh? The name's Bill Willoughby. No one by that name in our morgue. Well, I may have to reserve a slab for him yet. Looks as if he was mixed up in a watch switching bracket at the Stanley Company. Anyhow, he's missing. Okay, I'll check on it. I have an alarm sent out for him to every city within a thousand miles. Get me a good description of the guy. Right, Inspector. So long. What was that all about, Faraday? Why shouldn't I ask? No, nothing important. A guy at the Stanley Watch Company was in on a gimmick to switch watches. Now he's missing. I'm more interested in Mary's being missing. I still say she's pulling a gag of some kind. But why? She has no reason to. Faraday, this is beyond the joke stage. It's very serious. Mm. Either Mary has dropped out of this world or we're out of our minds. <laughs> Hello? A collect call for Henry Tyler from Jim Lawrence in Ashley. Yes, yes, I'll take it off right now. Go ahead. Hello? Hello? Hello, Mr. Tyler. Oh, yes, Bill. How are you? Broke, Mr. Tyler, or I wouldn't have reversed the check. 
charges on this car. But you had money when you left? Well, I got into a card game and lost it all, Mr. Tyler. Send me some. I told you I wouldn't have money for you for a while. Look, I can't wait. I'm broke. No, I'm sorry, Bill, but I'm not ready to... What is this, Tyler? The double cross? Now, look, if it weren't for my brains and money, you'd still be nothing more than a glorified shipping clerk at a watch company. I bought the chief movement. So the legitimate Stanley movements and the gimmick watches, didn't I? Sure, but your idea wasn't worth a dime without my help. I filled every order and kept my inventory right so we wouldn't be found out that we were ready to quit. Now I want my job. All right, all right, all right. I'll send you some. Now, what's your address? General Delivery, yes. All right. The name is Lawrence, isn't it? Yeah, Jim Lawrence. I'll send you some money tonight. And don't gamble at this time. Yeah. You'll get all your money, Bill. Yes, you'll get everything you're entitled to. Good evening, Mr. Johnson. Oh, hello, Blackie. Mr. Johnson, do you still have Miss Wesley's watch, the one I brought in last week to be cleaned? Oh, yes, yes, Blackie, I do. Oh, then she hasn't been in to pick it up. No, no, but it's ready. Do you want it? No, I don't think so. I was hoping she'd been in to get it. You'd remember when. At least I'd know when she was left. What's the matter, Mr. Johnson? You seem upset. Well, I have reason to be, Blackie. I, I sold a Stanley watch this morning. This afternoon, the customer brought it back to me with the casing and works of a two-dollar timepiece. Uh-oh. I looked at a shipment of Stanley watches that I bought last night, and all 400 of them were nothing but two-dollar movements in Stanley cases. And those watches came to you directly from the Stanley Watch Company? They came from the Stanley Watch Company with its official stamp and seal. I see. But I bought them from a man named Tyler. Ty- he said these were the last ones he had. Tyler, huh? And he's got no more watches to sell. Why didn't I think of this before? I guess I just didn't find out about watches in time. Hello? Miss Bennett? Yes? This is Skylander. Oh. Are you alone? It's all right to talk. What's up? I just want to tip you off. If Blackie or Inspector Faraday call... It's all right to send them to the other tenants on your floor. I've talked to them all. Oh, that's fine. Only, I'm getting worried. Oh? Has uh, Blackie been there since I was there? No, it isn't that. Well? It's just that I don't think we can get away with this. Tyler or no Tyler, we can't keep this up much longer. We won't have to. Only don't do any talking. Tyler wouldn't like it. I wouldn't like it. And I'm quite sure Miss Wesley wouldn't like it. Understand? That's the story, Faraday. It took money to buy a lot of those $2 watches, and Tyler had the money. He probably went to Bill Willoughby with his idea and sold the young guy. And I think Mary found out about that. Well, maybe, but if... Oh, Inspector Faraday. Yeah, Matthews? Inspector, we just got a report that someone looking like that missing Bill Willoughby called for a letter at general delivery down in Ashley, using the name of Jim Lawrence. Okay. Contact the local police in Ashley. Have them pick the guy up for questioning. Yes, sir. You know, wait a minute, Matthews. Don't do that. Who's in charge of this department, Blackie? You or me? You're running it, Faraday. But I've just come up with an idea for running down Henry Tyler. Hello there. Uh, Got anything for me today? Uh, Let me see. What was that name again? Uh, Jim... I know you were in yesterday. I gave you a letter sent in care of general delivery, but I don't remember the name. Uh, The the name is Lawrence. Jim Lawrence. Oh, yes, that's right. (laughs) Glad you think so. Uh, Got anything for me? Yep, a wire. Uh Uh, That's a telegram. Only people call them wires. I don't know why. Never could figure it out. Let me have it. Okay, young fella. Here you are. Now, you sign right here. Yes, sure. That's it. Yeah. Uh, Might as well open this, eh? uh Well, I'll be... What's the matter, son? Bad news? Yes. Yes, but it's going to be bad news for the guy who sent me this wire, too. Open up in there, Tyler. Open up. Yes, who is it? Bill Willoughby, open up. Just a minute. Just a minute. Hey, what's the matter with you, Bill? You're out of that money I sent you yesterday. No, I still have most of it. And what are you doing in town, you fool? The police are looking for you. You know what I'm doing here. You sent me a telegram to come back. Are you out of your mind? I didn't send any wire. No, well, it's addressed to Jim Lawrence, General Delivery Ashley. And who knew I was in Ashley and under that name but you? You young idiot. That telegram's a trick. You probably got the police right to me. Oh, the police. Very straight, hey, sir. What? 
And let's see those arms of yours in the air very straight. Get yours up to him. Yeah, all right. I could kill you for that. You're not killing anybody, Tyler. I'll say you're not. Look, Tyler. You're Faraday's property now. But I want to know where Mary Wesley is. Who? Take that Willoughby out of here, Faraday. This guy wants to play. Oh, let me stay and watch the fun, Blackie. Blackie? You're Boston Blackie? Yes, and I sent Willoughby that wire and followed him when he got off the train. Never mind about that. Where's Mary Wesley? Now, look, Blackie, I don't know where she is. I don't I don't even know who she is. She's a blonde girl. What's more important, she's my girl. And I know she set out to meet you. Hey, wait a minute. Is she about five feet four, wearing a blue dinner dress? That's her. You did see her, didn't you? Yes, as a matter of fact, I did. A couple of nights ago at a club. But that was the last I saw of her. The very last. <laughs> Stick close to me, Faraday. I'm going into Mary's apartment and get the truth out of that Bennett girl. Well, you're a sucker to want witnesses. But go ahead, ring the bell. You've got Tyler and Willoughby. Now it's my turn to get somebody. When that gal answers this door, I'm going to get... Mary! Hello, Blackie. Mary, hey, what's, what's going on Now, here? please, now, come on in, both of you. And don't scold me. Don't scold you. I ought to no, put you... Blackie, your... I had to do what I did. I bet. Well, I... Where have you been? I... I've, I've... And who was the girl in this place? Look, I've been hiding. And that was a very good friend of mine, Wanda Bennett. Now, it's all very simple, but it took a lot of fast work and the cooperation of a lot of people. Now, sit down, and I'll tell you all about it. You, you are Mary Wesley, aren't you? <laughs> yes, Blackie. And here's a very simple explanation of what happened. I saw Henry Tyler. He picked me up, just as you said he would. But he knew who I was, which you said he wouldn't. Uh-oh. And threatened you, I suppose. No. No, he, he threatened you. Well, then why didn't you come and tell me? Because I know you. You'd have forced me to tell you what he looked like, and you'd have gone after him. So what? So I liked you too much to want you to go to a a funeral, Blackie. Thanks. Tyler said he'd he'd kill you on sight, so I I arranged this. I said all along it was a gag. I really got cooperation, didn't I? You sure did. (laughs) The moving company promised not to say they'd move my stuff out and wander's in. Yes. Mm-hmm. And Harry the doorman and the superintendent, Mr. Skylander, and the other tenants all But why, Mary, why did you do such a crazy thing? What did it accomplish? Just what I wanted it to accomplish. Oh. You were so busy trying to figure out the mystery of what happened to me. You didn't try to find Henry Tyler. You see it... Uh-oh. Good heavens. You did find him, didn't you? Yes, I did. Even before I found you. Next time you want to play tricks on me, do me a favor, will you, Mary? What, for instance? Think of something to do that will baffle, upset, and bewilder me, and then... And then? And then don't do it. I think you will enjoy playing this music very much, Mlle. I hope so, monsieur. I've set half of Paris for it. Here at the air shop on the Rue de la Seine, you will always find all the finest music ever written. I remember that. Au revoir. Au revoir, mademoiselle, and come again. And now, what can I do for you, monsieur? I am looking for the sheet music. It is all right, Henri. The girl is at the side. Good. There. Have you agreed to do what I ask? You're sure there isn't any risk? Not if you are careful and do what I have told you to do. Well, I told my sister I might be going out of town for a while. That's all. Good. Then it's arranged. Yes. Come in the back. I have something for you. Money, I hope. Money, a ticket for passage to America on the liner leaving La Havre tomorrow night. And something I want you to carry with you, which is very valuable. What is that? I will show you. Yes? First, here is what you must guard with your life. Guard that with my life? That's nothing but a small buzzer and battery set. An ordinary door buzzer. Ah, a door buzzer, Henri. Oui. But you will open a door with this that will make both of us rich. Comprenez-vous? Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.